He is the Managing Director, Area General Manager India Subcontinent for GlaxoSmithKline Consumer Healthcare, who in his current role is the commercial head of the area. Now, being at the helm of affairs for an FMCG company of such a large scale, his prime responsibility, of course, is to drive growth and engagement in India, of which digital integration must be imperative. Ladies and gentlemen, he is also the jury chair for the eighth edition of the Indian Digital Media Awards 2017. Please help me welcome Mr. Manoj Kumar. So, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a pleasure for me to be actually in here in our always on time where connections are mostly made today through devices and through social platforms. My special thanks to Exchange for Media and all the partners for organizing the event and the relevant seminar and to all the speakers who have taken their time out here to address the gathering. Our everyday lexicon today is dotted with words like volatility, disruption, digitization, digital transformation. We all agree that constant change is the new normal and nimbleness is the new benchmark of business excellence. To every marketer today, the consumer is the fundamental driver of these changes, adventurous, experimental, and downright fickle. This behavior, once thought of as unique for millennials, is now considered the norm, and in several cases, mainstream. So who is this new age consumer, and how do they behave? They're, of course, young, middle class, with strong mobility and connection. Like small babies, they need instant gratification and time is their currency. They can make purchase decisions anywhere, anytime, involving a wide variety of devices. They are extremely social. They communicate and trust one another. In fact, they trust their friends and families and even virtual strangers more than they trust corporations and brands today. They believe in the wisdom of the crowd and their purchase decision is highly dependent on the opinion of others. They are highly connected and in real time, yet extremely distracted. They are constantly bombarded with massive and overwhelming volume of messages demanding their instant attention. It's not a surprise that today their attention span has, drawn, has dropped down to just about eight seconds. So if any of you out there have managed to remain attentive to my talk over the last few minutes, then you will certainly be considered as an exception by these standards. So what does it mean for business? How do, you, how do I look at it from a company point of view? And I want to highlight four points here. The first one is to me consumers today live somewhat like Harry Potter, who transcends between the world of wizards and that of muggles with his magic wand out there. And similarly, these consumers move seamlessly between the online and the offline world using their mobile phone as their magic wand. Customer purchase paths now have multiple touch points which transcend the physical and digital world. They may look for things in store, but buy online. Conversely, search online and then buy from the nearest brick and mortar retailer. Retailers like Macy in US have found that for every $1 spent on online search optimization, it results in $6 sales uplift in their physical stores. Businesses need to discover and rediscover their customers' new path of purchase and prioritize the most impactful touch points across both online and offline. During this entire customer purchase journey, 
Mobile phones are the new bridge connect connecting online and offline. Machine to machine connectivity, real time data processing, and analytics are the new capabilities which businesses must master. The second point I see is that exciting content will be the key to engage with our distracted consumers. Content is dismissed if viewers don't like it in the first five seconds. We first had to shift our mindset that content is not the same as advertising and taking the TV commercial and putting that on social media. Now we have to understand that content is not just eye video, banners and text, but material which can start meaningful conversations and drive engagement, especially on devices like mobile phones. The third point I want to make is that while business needs to continue to move consumers from awareness to purchase, its job does not get over at the till point. We now have to go a step further and complete the path with advocacy. This would mean a shift from passive content to active conversations, from getting users to not only view content, but to share, like, mention, comment, or recommend. Data suggests that 83% of consumers rely on families and friends as the most trusted source of advertising, and 66% 66% pay attention to opinions of others posted online. Having the right balance between promoters of the brand and the detractors is important to improve brand affinity. Engagement ideas like gamification, mobile apps, social listening, and social CRM are becoming increasingly important. Studies show again that customers who experience positive social customer care are nearly three times more likely to become advocates and buy the product. The fourth point to note is that today's business are evolving to meet the asks of the new consumers, and digital platforms offer opportunities to develop unique and disruptive business models. An example that comes to my mind is the growth of Dollar Shave in the US, which developed a unique subscription-based model taking the market leader, Gillette, completely by surprise. Closer home today, you heard Paperboat, which leveraged its ethnic consumer insight and with innovative packaging and activations across digital platforms, has disrupted the way consumers think about health drinks. In both cases, the digital platforms have enabled low entry cost, and allowing new businesses to challenge bigger established players. But this is just the beginning. When you look ahead, in the intelligent future, product and services will increasingly talk with each other, with more machine to machine and human to him human interactions. Sorry, human to machine interactions. This will open more opportunities for businesses to disrupt the status quo. So what are some of the challenges we are facing today when I sit from the other side and look at, look at the digital uh, world out here? Today in India, nearly 400 million people are online. And this number exceeds by far the number who can speak English, which is about 180 million. There is an increasing demand for vernacular content, which is more engaging with consumers. The second thing we have is, that there is a challenge on infrastructure and connectivity. Despite the advent of 4G, our connectivity speeds are amongst the lowest in the world. More than 50% of our subscribers are on 2G, and this compares to only 19% in China. And this is likely to continue for some more time in the future. The third thing, which we had a very interesting panel discussion, is that the brand advertiser there is an additional challenge of measuring impact of all the digital investments. There is a long list of measures, and keeping track on real-time basis is a big, big challenge. There are some expensive mixed models to optimize media plans, but they too, besides taking a lot of time and effort, end up in an annual exercise and don't capture the dynamic nature of change which is happening all around us. While these challenges 
are today as challenges, these are also opportunities for the future. I'm sure that today's conference and workshops, we all have got some more ideas and some more food for thought on how to address these when we go back. I want to talk a bit about what we are doing at GSK at this stage. At GSK, we are focusing on just a few things in this digital arena, things which can deliver the highest impact to drive both top line growth and bottom line efficiency. Our approach is on nailing the basics and avoid the shiny syndrome effect, which often comes at the detriment of nailing the basics. We believe establishing the fundamentals is the prerequisite for any successful sustainable op transformation. At this moment, I'd like to share with you an example of how one of our brands in US used online precision marketing to drive offline sales. Online marketing to drive offline sales and leveraging understanding of consumer purchase journey, social listening, real-time data analysis, and consumer conversations, some of the points I was making in my, in my talk earlier. If we could see the video, please. Nearly 40 million people will get sick this year in the US. In a digital age, we know most of them. We also know when they're getting sick, even before they do. In 2016, the US Theraflu team launched a next generation digital experience. Using weather, location, and sediment data to power better, faster connections with our consumers. Here's how it works. First, we listen. We're working with sick weather, monitoring millions of real-time social conversations to generate actionable sentiment data. Turning tweets and posts into ones and zeros in real time. Using machine learning and native language cognition, we know this is relevant and this isn't. Then we analyze, working with the weather company to map that sediment data at the local level. Powering the seasonal Theraflu cold and flu tracker across a variety of touch points. When consumers check the weather, when they go to theraflu.com, when they visit their favorite retailer site. And when consumers engage, they get information that matters to them and is fueled by them. So we can react quickly and connect with consumers at precisely the right moment. Because the weather conditions that trigger colds and flu also trigger ads. For Theraflu, that means we can adapt media buying to reflect real-time incidents, eliminating guesswork, optimizing messaging, and reducing media waste. That allows us to reach consumers more effectively. Here, here, here. So when they go here, they know exactly what to look for to power relief fast. From sentiment to shelf, Theraflu is leveraging data to reach consumers, and consumers are responding. Nearly 50 million people have visited the Theraflu cold and flu tracker on the Weather Channel app. And this is just the beginning. So uh, obviously you saw some of those practices and I'm sure you would have seen a lot more in the day to day. I want to touch upon my experience as the jury chair of IDMA 2017. This was my first year as part of the IDMA jury and it was a fantastic experience to say the least. It, hel it helped to have a very capable jury who patiently and excitedly went through over 75 entries to select the winners in seven categories. Our criteria had equal weightage on strategy, creativity, execution, and results. The jury was very impressed with the quality of the entries which, show cause, which showcased some of the best digital work in the country across web, mobile, social media, search, and integrated campaigns, and had real tough time selecting the winners from such rich entries. I'm sure all of you will be keen to learn about the winners in the evening today. So just to conclude, I would say that today, the best digital minds have come together in this forum to share their future-ready thoughts and keep us relevant and on our toes. I hope this event was very informative and inspiring for you all. I once again thank 
the team at Exchange for Media, and all the uh, media partners, along with everyone in this room, for their participation, enthusiasm, and for keeping us engaged. Have a great evening ahead. Thank you. Mr. Manish Kumar, thank you very much. I'm going to request uh, Florian Litchwald to kindly join me on stage to present a memento to Manoj Kumar. Sir, if you could take center stage, please. Thank you very much, sir, once again.